Welcome to the sixth video in our pre-instructional video series. This one's about estimating sums. It's really important to know about estimating sums because we will be doing it a lot in third grade with addition, subtraction, multiplication, not really with division, but definitely with multiplication. You'll see it in fourth grade as well with higher numbers and more complex tasks. All right, so in our last video, we looked at uh, rounding numbers to the nearest 10 to the nearest 100. That's basically what we're going to be doing in this lesson, except we're going to be adding the two numbers together after you get done rounding them. So our little mantra we're going to use is round, then solve. After the word, instead of the word solve, it could be add or subtract or multiply. Uh, but in this case, it's just going to be addition. Okay, so you will be asked to uh, round or estimate. They'll tell you to estimate the sum to the nearest 10. So. Let's say you have this problem. Let's say you have 28 plus 46. So we want to round to the nearest 10, and we want to find the sum. Well, that's pretty straightforward. If we round to the nearest 10, we're looking here. Do you remember 4 to the floor and 5 to the sky? We look next door to the neighbor to the right, and that tells us if we round up or if we round down. In this case, the 8 is here, so that's 5 to the sky. So this 28 rounds to 30. This is 46, it's 5 to the sky because the 6 is past the 5. So that rounds up to 50. And then we just, the zeros are easy to add in the 1's place, so that's 0. And the 8's are easy to add, or excuse me, 8, because it's 5 and 3, I gave it away there. Okay, so the other instance in which you're going to estimate sums is rounding to the nearest 100. So here's an example for you to look at. In this case, we're going to be rounding to the nearest hundred, so that means we're looking at the hundreds place here. It's going to look to the neighbor to the right, that's four to the floor, because one is less than four. So 114 will round down to 100. Now there is no hundreds in 58, but you still underline the hundreds where it would be, and then you look to the neighbor next door. Interesting. So zero, basically, rounds up to one, 58 rounds up to 100 because it's over halfway to 100. So this 114 plus 58, an estimated answer would be 200. Let's look at our third example of this particular problem a different way. OK, a lot of you might be thinking, why would we round 58 all the way to 100? That seems pretty silly. I mean, 50 is a lot closer. And you would be right. So the third way of rounding is something to do with uh, things called compatible numbers. When you have compatible numbers, you can have numbers that are really close to 50s or really close to 5s, or when you round both numbers, when you add them together, they make a 10. So if you looked at this original example we had up here, we would have it, again, 114 plus 58. We could round 58. Let's just round it to 50. That's okay to do. It's close enough. It's better than rounding it to 100 because 50 is closer to 58 than 100 is. 114, that can still be, whoops, 100. And then we add it together and we get 150 as our estimated answer. So that's a lot different than 200. And if you were to work this out, So the actual answer is 172. So rounding 58 to 50, or even 60 really, would get you a lot closer answer to your original. All right, I'm going to do one more example with this compatible numbers thing. Really, we're looking for the closest chunky number, or a number that ends in 0. Um, this is especially useful when you're having a 3-digit number and a 2-digit number, or a 4-digit number and a 3-digit number, where the digits aren't the same. So. Uh, let's look at 167 plus 27. All right, now I can solve this a couple of different ways. I could round both numbers to the nearest 10 and then add them up. I could round this to 200 and add them up. Whatever is easiest is going to work best for us. Uh, this 27, I'm just going to round that to 30. That seems pretty straightforward. That's a nice close round number. This one is, can be 170. 
because 67 is really close to 170, and that gives us a number that ends in 0. So you're always trying to get numbers that end in 0 that are close to what you started with. And that, believe it or not, is going to be really nice for us because we add our 1s up, we get 0 in the 1s place. Now if we add 7 and 3, well that makes 10. So that makes, we'll carry the 1 over here. We get a 0 in the 10s place, and then we add our 200s up now. Now we get 200. Let's see how look, that looks to our uh, actual answer. So 194 is the accurate answer, and 200 is an estimated answer. So that's pretty close. That's only a difference of 6. It's not bad. All right, here are your tasks to do. The first one, I'd like you to estimate this problem to the nearest 10. So it's 39 plus 102 to the nearest 10. Remember, round and then solve. And then, for this one, I'd like you to estimate to the nearest 100. 539 plus 399. Thanks, and rewatch these videos as you need.